Ooh, what do we got here? Hello, fine people of the interwebs. To your favorite hiding out in her shop from a winter storm, Sarah here with another truck review. It's sleeting outside, I don't know if you can hear it. Anyway, today I have the 2021 Toyota 4Runner Trail Edition. This is a special edition model that is slated just above the base model that's set up for trails. First things first, what sets this trail edition apart from the other 4Runners is it's cheap. And I mean that in cost. It is not super expensive like the TRD Pro, yet it comes in some special colors like a TRD edition. Like this one is cement gray, and you can also get it in army green, super white, and black. Those are all kind of solid color choices, in my opinion, for a 4Runner. The Trail Edition also comes with these unique dark gray 17-inch wheels that are wrapped in 26570 Dunlop AT20 Grand Trex. It's like a fancy bicycle. It's a grand trek. I just made some cyclist laugh at that joke. Also, shout out to Toyota for using these four pot brake calipers in the front of the Tacoma and the 4Runner. You also get LED projector headlights and LED fog lights on the Trail Edition. What you do not get though, and it's strange because this is a Trail Edition, is the TRD skid plate. And this right here, comes standard on the Trail Edition. It's a Yakima basket. So you can put your Snackima in the Yakima basket and have a picnic on the trail. Somewhere in Toyota, there's an engineer that came up with the conclusion placing four sesame seeds on the mirror cap will aid in fuel efficiency. You also get these black housing LED taillights on the Trail Edition as well. Don't mess with Texas. In case you weren't aware, the back window goes up and down in a 4Runner. I've done that since the 80s, but I just figured I'd show you in case you didn't know. And back here is the treasure that is in the Trail Edition. It's special just to the Trail Edition. I guess I could. There you go. We. It comes picnic ready. You get the cargo slider and a color matched 40 quart cooler. So if you get a green one, it comes with a green cooler. If you get a black one, black cooler, white one, white cooler, cement one, cement cooler. It even has a little Toyota lanyard to hold it in place. That is so cheesy and cute. All right, slide you back, just like that. Lock it in. Oh, there's also a little first aid kit back here. Uh, AC 120, 400 watt power inverter outlet and an old school cigarette lighter. There's all kinds of little pockets inside there too. Oop. Welcome to the interior of the Trail Edition 4Runner. Because this is close to the bottom of the model lineup, it comes with a key that you insert into a slot on the steering column. Uh, the seats in here are unique to the Trail Edition and they're cloth. And I like that because I have to say, I think cloth I enjoy better than leather or synthetic leather. It's black with this tan pattern and tan stitching in it. It does have some bolstering and if I go like this fast enough because I'm rubbing cloth on cloth I could start a fire which is also useful when you're on a trail. The pouches in the back of the seats are nets. I like that. That's nice instead of being lined of tissue paper or something weird like a lot of other cars are. The seats are not heated though. There's just two blank plugs down here. Neither is the steering wheel heated, but keep in mind this is close to the bottom of the model lineup. So it's got some little biscuits in the center console that are removable back here in case someone spills something nasty in there and you need to clean it after. I like what they did there where they included this gloss black piano trim around the sides of the screen, which give it appearance of being a bigger screen than it actually is. I see what you're doing there, Toyota. It's clever, but hey, it works because it's not that bad looking in here. Looks less like a 90s boombox, although the giant knobs for the climate control, little boomboxy. Dual USB ports back here. I like that the buttons for the windows are up high in the back too. I like that they use a graphic of like a 1970s van for the rollover warning on here. Of course, they're not going to use a picture of a 4Runner because you don't want to insinuate that this is actually going to roll over. What they should have done, though, is used a picture of one of their competitors' vehicles to troll them. That would be kind of hilarious. So there's like a little graphic of a Ford or like a Nissan or something on there rolling over. All right, let's fire this thing up. Give it a rev. I 
love the sound of the 1GR. It's just such a muscular sounding V6. Nice. As far as tech features and infotainment and gauges go, this does have a couple options added to it. It does have the factory navigation system with satellite radio, and it does have fruit and robot compatibility, as well as weather and traffic incidents. It does have Toyota Safety Sense package with radar cruise control and lane keep assist. That's why there's a giant black square on the front that actually looked like it was for a miniature license plate. It's not. It's for the radar. One thing I was a bit disappointed in though, Toyota, is the fact that this is dubbed a trail edition and it's missing the multi-terrain select, the crawl control, and the KDSS system. And I get it, those are reserved for the TRD models, but it's called the trail edition. Fortunately though, it does have a track as well as the downhill assist control. So it does have a few off-road goodies. You probably don't really need all those other features. It's just if you're a novice off-roader, they're probably a beneficial item to have. This is a trail and I am in a trail edition 4Runner. So this is the best way I know to test it. I've only been down this once and I couldn't make it all the way because I was in a SUV that just wasn't capable enough. This I think is, I don't feel it'll be too challenging for the 4Runner, but I've only been down halfway. Uh, right now I am in two wheel drive. I'm not gonna switch into four unless I absolutely need it. The only thing I'm worried about in this is the fact that it has these really pretty gloss gunmetal wheels and there's some jagged rocks out here, but it's got a pretty meaty sidewall on the tire, so I should be good. Ooh, okay, so that's the way I went when I was in other truck so I'm gonna go this way oh yeah this is this is much more challenging <laughs> this way but I don't think it's gonna be an issue for this I don't have a front-facing camera which is kind of a downside not a problem not even a problem for this forerunner this really begs the question do you actually need to spend the extra money for a TRD off-road or a TRD pro when just a 4x4 forerunner can do quite a bit of the same stuff. Doesn't have as much ground clearance as the TRD Pro, but I think like the TRD Pro, the benefit is that is it's modified from the factory. And if you're not mechanically inclined and you don't really feel like doing your own lift kit and stuff or upgrading your own suspension, it makes sense. This is where I stopped last time I was out here on this trail. I didn't go any further. Uh, I don't really think it matters in this. I'm gonna go down. I think I'm gonna go this way. As far as the nerdy figures go, this has a 30 degree approach and a 26 degree departure. And it has nine inches of ground clearance. In case you weren't capable of Googling that, you're welcome. Ooh, what do we got here? I'm just gonna keep going down this trail until it gets too narrow. I'm not gonna scratch this truck up just for a car view. I think this used to be a pond, but it's been such a drought, it's all dried up. It's actually a little bit of mud. So I'm out here by myself because my sister's uh, chase vehicle is actually broken right now. So I gotta be careful. <laughs> Not to get stuck, but I still wanna have some fun. <laughs> all right, that was all two wheel drive, like nothing. Well, I guess that's trail tested. I went down a trail, it did it excellent. In two wheel drive, never needed four. I know a lot of you wanna see me do like insane, crazy off-roading to push these vehicles, but you gotta remember, I'm just me. This isn't the Grand Tour or Top Gear, so if I destroy a vehicle off-roading, I'm not gonna get another one to review probably. So I have to like respect these vehicles. Ooh, hood shot. This looks like someone sprayed on a toupee. Hello, welcome to Garage Science with Sarah. Under the hood of this 2021 Toyota 4Runner is still none other than the 1GR FE. 
It is a four liter V6 that produces 270 horsepower at 5,600 RPM and 278 pound-feet of torque at 4,400 RPM. This engine has been in the 4Runner, 2nd Gen Tacoma, and the FJ Cruiser for going on 16 or 17 years now. I mean, another handful of years and this engine will be considered a classic, even though it's still in a current production vehicle. This engine has me conflicted because usually I'm for technology and improving things and new and better, but it's just such a solid workhorse of an engine that it's hard to hate on it. My business partner in the shop next door has a 2007 4Runner with the same exact 1GR V6 and his has over 260,000 miles in it and has never developed an oil leak, nor has he had to replace any major components on the truck. That is a testament to how bulletproof these things are. In the name of science, it's now time to give this thing the beans. I'm gonna disable my traction control. Slick out too, that should be fun. And I'm gonna put it in sport mode. Let this thing eat and see what it can do. It's in two wheel drive also. Ready? Go. Oh, <laughs> didn't do much, just kind of seesawed. Go! Ooh, listen to a roar. That's good. It's not fast, it's just adequate. Hello, I'm back. The drivetrain in the 4Runner is still none other than a part-time four-wheel drive system. You can get it with two-wheel drive, but why would you want to do that? It's a 4Runner and it's paired to a five-speed automatic transmission and that is it. In case you were wondering, this is what it looks like under the 4Runner. They're not messing around with corrosion prevention. This rocker panel is plastic and everything under here is coated or stainless. The exhaust, the underneath of the frame. I'm so glad the 4Runner stayed body on frame unlike the Pathfinder. Got a nice rugged skid plate, solid rear axle. Does have independent front suspension. Look at the sizeless. Wow. The muffler is so quiet even when you knock on it. Listen to that. That's really weird. It looks like it's got a little heat shield to keep the rubber hanger from drying out over the years. Yeah, same thing on this one. Little tiny baby heat shield to protect that rubber. It looks like it'd be a common problem off-road to have this part of the exhaust get munched because it hangs lower than the cross member. It's time for the braking test. Nobody behind me but a penguin and a cup holder. Ready? Whoa, oh my God, I'm gonna flip over. <laughs> I thought it was gonna do a cartwheel. Oh, that was crazy. It stopped good though. As far as normal driving goes, it's not too bad. I like the way a truck or a body on frame SUV rides. It's stiff and rigid, but it doesn't beat you up. The fuel economy is as you would expect with something like this. It's not horrible, but it's nothing great either. It's definitely not a luxury vehicle, but if you're looking for a luxury vehicle, then why the hell are you buying a 4Runner? You buy one of these because you just want something that could survive an apocalypse. And this thing feels like it damn near could. If you guys have never seen my reviews before, I have multiple categories to rate and assess them. Starting with the bean score is a rating of one of five beans based on something you get in your gut when you give it the beans. and. This 4Runner Trail Edition is getting a rating of one bean. It's not quick, but it's grunty where it matters, and that's what you want in something like this. Next is a cookie score. Yes, I'm flying through this because it's freezing out here. It's a rating of one to five cookies based on what you get for what you spend. And the Trail Edition 4x4 as it sits right here is getting a rating of 3.7 cookies. There's solid value here because it's not loaded up with a bunch of crap you don't need. It has literally everything you need to go down a trail. Next is the meatball score. It has a rating of one to five meatballs based on a truck's ability to tackle dirt clumps that look like cow poop. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> the trail edition four by four is getting a rating of hair in my mouth. 2.9 meatballs. It's just a smidge less than I gave the TRD Pro Edition because of ground clearance, it's a little less, and also doesn't have all the electronic gadgets to make off-roading easier for novice drivers. 
And with that said, I truly feel if you have an advanced off-roader in this versus the TRD Pro, they're probably gonna be able to go most places in either truck. It's just the ground clearance that will make up the difference. Lastly though is the Penguin score. It is a rating of one to five penguins based on how much I personally like a vehicle. And this truck right here is getting a rating of 3.2 penguins. It's just a classic recipe for a good solid 4x4 SUV that will outlast its owners. And it's simple in there, it kind of feels dated, but that's what makes this truck amazing because it's not trying to impress anybody. It's just trying to outlast everybody and they do a really good job at that. Anyway, I'm gonna end this video now because it's, it's like 42 degrees outside. It's kind of cold, it snowed. So I'll see you soon with another, bye.